Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Serving While Being Served. Hey, y'all. What's up? What's up? Welcome, welcome. And we are now on episode three of season three. We are back on our regular scheduled program, and I'm so grateful and humbled that you are here listening and joining me. We have a wonderful topic and a wonderful word. First of all, just I wanted to say I hope you are having an awesome day, morning, night, noon, midday, lunch. I hope that God is blessing you abundantly. And I know, wait, I know that God is blessing you abundantly, but I hope that you are living in your blessings and in your truth. And I just want you to be better. That's what serving while being served is all about. So let's get to the word. So we will be covering in this episode, this is, oh, this man, this topic here, I've been needing to cover this for a long time. I'm sure I'm going to come back to this topic again, because it's always a topic that needs to be covered. Um, and we just need to have this discussion. So take a seat, <laughs> go ahead, sit on down my baby. So it is, I am living a life of luxury. Cause what? Cause God said so. I added the cause, cause what? Those were my own ad libs, but cause God said so. That's why I'm living this life of luxury. So many people, if you follow me on, if you are a part of my Instagram family, nurse underscore Manuero, you will know that I am a luxury lifestyle brand. That is what I am all about. I cover everything from fruits and vegetables to Gucci and Prada. Um, I cover everything from praise and worship to, I used to be out in the streets. I don't want to go back no more. I am very universal. I have been through it all. I have a testimony of my own and I am not a non-judgmental, very happy, love and light type of place. But we have to have a serious discussion about this. You know, so many come to me and ask me, why did I decide to call my brand? Even my husband, when I met him, he said, why do you call yourself a luxury lifestyle brand? I said, because I feel luxury should be in every shape and form of your life, down to the socks, down to the carpet, down to warm floors, down to organic fruit, down to, you know, lo lo lotions and oils from France and Paris. And I just, I just think that's what it's all about. So you know, so many come to me and are like, well, you know, how, what motivates you to live a life of luxury? And I'm like, huh? How do you live a life of luxury? And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? What are these questions? And I've always felt that the questions were so non um, God driven. And that's why I had to let, and I'm so vocal about letting everyone know that I'm living the life that God promised me. I'm not doing something um, so taboo, you know, and I feel like, especially in the African American culture, it's looked luxury is looked as as taboo, and that's because it's been branded and 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 knocked over the head to us that we are supposed to not live this life of luxury. We're the help. We're this. We're that. But we are not. We are switching things up, and we are doing what is old and what we should be doing, and that's just bottom line. So I always ask everyone, or people ask me what luxury means to me and the universal my universal de definition for for your luxury and this is going to blow you away is is for you to live for you not to survive but for you to be living for you not to be being but for you to be living for you not to be just there but for you to be living that's what luxury is to me that's what luxury living is to me that's the universal the universal one that I start out with whenever I bring that topic up to anyone. But for on a more personal note, luxury to me is having the best of the best. And why I say the best of the best is because we, you, me, I, particularly I, baby, deserve to have the best of the best. It has been promised to us. There's multiple scriptures. That is what God told us. That is what the promise is for us when we transcend and we go home, that we will live a life with gold streets and abundance and, and with no pain and with peace and with joy. And that's another thing. Peace and joy and love and light is also a luxury. It's a luxury that was taken from us over time. You know, so many of us have been brought up on survival and not on love you know and so many of us don't understand that that is the foundation that is keeping us from being the best and living the best and having this life of luxury it's all the mindset um it's all the way you think and it's all the way you carry yourself you know the number one issue that i have particularly particularly um that i've noticed that's that's something that's been carried down that's a generational i would say curse that's a generational you know thing that 
has been taught to so many women and it hasn't even been taught. It's been more so women have seen, you know, this and they think this is acceptable to have and accept the bare minimum. You know, they may have seen their mothers, their sisters, um, you know, aunts, family members, even men accept the bare minimum. And it more so isn't they accepted the bare minimum, the bare minimum. It more so that's what was offered and that's what culturally it was okay. That's, that's, this is just, this as much as we gonna get kind of attitude. So I think the number one thing that you need to do and that you need to change is understanding that you deserve more than the bare minimum. You know, you deserve to live in a better environment. You look, you deserve to have a bigger home. You deserve to have a nicer car. You deserve to be able to get in your car. People don't even understand a luxury is just getting in your car, starting your car, going and driving somewhere and not worried about it being broken down, not worrying about your window, not rolling down, not worrying about if it's going to make it to drop your kids off, pick your kids up. Those are luxuries. Those are so many things that have been taken away from us. Poverty has been, you know, driven so far in our community that so many of us don't even understand that those are basic luxuries that we should have and that we should fight for you know everything is always spoken so down upon um you know it's so it's very disheartening that in our culture you know whenever we do things that are more I will say fine ethically financially um better for us you know um that that will keep you wealthy you know that will help you build a business they have been etched in our community and looked at as being poor or not the appropriate way to do things. You can't lease cars. You can't do this. You can't do that. And realistically, we have to do we have to remember and understand that has been taught to us because those were things and those were luxuries that were given to another people, but were not given to us. So it's so crazy now that we switch things around in our community and we talk down on the next person, you know, about it and, and make them feel bad because they're doing something that's more financially, that's making them more financially free and that's keeping them in a better position i also think that we kind of categorize um living a luxury and a in a great and a bomb and a very wealthy and expensive i love these words god gold hard we're very <laughs> very 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 top of the floor very top tier lifestyle um we always want to relate it to materialistic items and materialistic items are great you know that's fine and all dandy but it's just so much more deeper than that it rolls so much more deeper. It's just being able to get up and just be you. We didn't have those luxuries. Do you understand it's a luxury to just be you? It's a luxury that you can just get up and decide today I'm going to fully live out my purpose. I'm going to fully live out my dream. That's something that you should be wanting your children to be able to do. That's something you should want yourself to be able to do. And you have to sit down with yourself and figure out. And that's when you have, and I say this all the time, it's very imperative that when you are trying to establish a new way of thinking, living, and being, that you have to break the foundation that you've been just laying on and has been taught to you and has been taught to be built from generation to generation. You have to break that in order for you to build a whole new one. So you have to really sit down and be very critical of yourself and of, of things that you've been taught language that you've been taught what's been appropriate it's always been taught to African Americans and this is very and I always I get so angry when I hear this I can't live around you know other uh, other races you know I, it wasn't taught we, we don't live in those areas why why don't we live in those areas because you've been taught for so long that you're not, they're not worthy to be there. That if you go there, that you will be accused of crimes. That if you go there, that you won't be able to get the best of this and that your children will be treated this way. But really what it is, is a fear tactic. Really, a lot of you are not living in the, in the life that you should be living with the luxury should, you, you should have because you are so fearful of what's been taught to you. And it's not even your fault. This has been etched in you and this was etched in your mother and etched in your great grandmother. And it's, and it's hard to break it. When you don't really, when you don't really know how to break it or you don't even really acknowledge that it's an issue, you know, you should know that living a luxurious life is living and being wherever you want to be doing what you want to do and not letting someone or something or, or said of, or you're not supposed to do this, hold you or hinder you from these things. And that's why you're not capable and able of getting the, the, the step one. The step one is just doing you and living a life of non-struggle. That's what it is. Once you get past that, once you start living on love and light, that's when everything else flows. Once you, and, and, and then living in love and light, I, I, you, it, it's gonna, it's gonna involve God. It's not going to be an individual thing. 
Okay, it's a, living in love and light has to involve God. You have to have a forgiving heart. You have to have a loving heart. You have to have an un, understanding heart. That 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 also that plays a major part in you living this life of abundance and, and luxury. You know, it's all about your thinking. It's all about what you put out into and what you're gonna and that's what you're gonna get back. So so many of us have grew up on this survival and this struggle that we don't understand that we're putting out poor frequencies. We're putting out struggle. You know, when you, when you walk around, you look like you're struggling and it's no shade. It, it's written all over your face. And that's why you do. And you carry yourself in the poor way. That's why you gossip. That's why you argue. That's why your attitude is poor. That's why you're not quick to listen. You're quick to judge. You don't want nobody telling you anything, but then you like, I want to, I want to drive a Rolls Royce truck. I want a big old house. I want my kids to have a best of the, that's the, then you have this attitude, but you're not even sitting down and really truly assessing yourself and saying, am I even carrying a heart that's willing and capable of living in life of luxury? Am I doing what I'm supposed to be doing as, as one of God's children here on this earth? Am I putting out light and love? Am I breaking the bonds of growing up on this survival mindset and not, and, and just, and just saying, I'm sick of it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to raise my children and re-raise myself on love and light. I'm going to re-raise my children on knowing they deserve the best of the best. They're capable of, uh, capable of going to this school and being there. They can fight whatever, you know, whatever negativity they may encounter, you know, whatever discrimination they may encounter, they can fight through it because somebody has to do it. A lot of things are not going to change until we decide that we're going to come through and we about to change them. A lot of us have are so complacent and feel like the battle is so large and the reason the battle is so large is because you don't have God. And when you have God, there is no large battle, my baby. When you have God, you can fight any battle that can possibly be fought because you know God is behind you. You know he will come through. He'll move that mountain and set all of y'all on the other side and be like, let's go. That's why it's so important that you have and you bear the fruit of that relationship that you learn and you like, you read, you stay in your word, you pray, you just be a better person because you will know that if you do this, you will pour into your children, you will pray and cover your children and they will be able to be great. You will be able to start them off with a kickstart and not a kickback. That's what it's all about. A lot of us are starting our children off with kickbacks because what you're doing is you're carrying all the anger. The poor childhood you had, the poor parenting that you received, and you're pouring it back into your children. And then you're wondering why, you know, they're having such poor frequency. They're not living this life of luxury. Or if they are trying to get this life of, you know, of this freedom of luxury of being who they want to be, they're doing it all the wrong ways. They're doing it in illegal ways. They're harming others to do it. And that's a no-no too. You don't want to do it in a way of harm. You don't want to do it in a way of any type of injustice to anybody. You want everything to come to you on a correct and a beautiful, nice, easy frequency. Not on no poor, hurting, breaking them down, killing, shooting, bang, bang frequency at all. You know, you just have to change your thinking. And once the thinking changed, that's when everything else will flow. That's when you're capable of doing it, doing better things. That's when you can walk into a job and know you don't deserve what they're giving you. That's when you can say, you know what? I know I don't deserve this, but I also have to work a little harder or I also have to put myself in a better predicament or let me figure out really what my dang on purpose is. Because also living in your purpose and living in who you are, that is, that is a part of living a luxurious life. Because once you get to living in who you are and doing what you're supposed to be doing things will flow abundantly to you like the blessings that come from nowhere you won't be like dang well what is this because you're doing what you're supposed to be doing my baby you're doing what God put you here to do and that's what's important it's important to talk to your family and your friends and and, and have these conversations let these be conversation openers when you when you're at during dinner like do you know what your purpose is you know, do you feel like you're secure in what you're doing and that is purpose driven? Do you feel like you're bringing something positive into this world? Do you feel like you're living your best? You're being your best. You're having your best. Are you driving the best? Are you eating the best? Could it be better? Is there room for improvement? Because if we start having these conversations with, 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 with just internally with our little circle and our tribe, it will get the ball rolling and it'll get, it'll get you thinking. And then you will start sitting there and you will start doing some edits to yourself and trying to figure out why. Why am I not living the best? Like, why, why, what, what, what's keeping me here? What's keeping me living like this? Because a lot of times it's you. It's this invisible line. It's this invisible mindset that's been taught to you that you, that you just don't even know this incorrect, or you haven't even had enough strength to question. 
it's so much, it's so much growth in questioning things and so much growth in realizing is there or, or trying to find out, is there another different way to do things? You know, can I be doing this in a different way? Can I be doing this in a better way? Can I be growing in a better way? That's what it's all about. A lot of y'all lazy in the mind. Y'all just thinking on like frequency one. You should be thinking on frequency 2000. Yeah, 2000. You should be thinking about A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. You should be making some letters up. You should start putting A, B, C, B, thinking together. It should, because once you start thinking like that, once you open your mind up like that, I'm telling you, it's going to be so much, so many great ideas are going to come in. And then you're going to realize different ways. Like maybe I could be doing this. I never even thought about trying this. Or I never even thought about teaching my kids this. Or let me move in this area and see if it's a little bit better for me. Maybe the calm and the peaceness of my environment. Maybe my children need that to do a little bit better. Maybe I need that. Maybe I need to feel safe and secure. A lot of y'all don't even feel safe and secure. Y'all don't even feel safe and secure to leave your car outside without somebody running up and doing something to it. So how do you expect to, to etch and to place that, those feelings of safe and security into your children? You don't understand how impaired of the small things is. It's like living somewhere that got you with some safe and security is a part of luxury living. Living somewhere where you can at least give your kids a little bit of freedom. Not where you got to be on pins and needles. Not where you got to be figuring out what's going to happen. How this going, if they go this place, is this going to be this? Can they go around this area? Can they lead their bikes outside? A lot of times it comes down to you just saying enough is enough. There's so much luxury in saying enough is enough. Like, I can't keep doing this no more. Like, I deserve better. Don't just let it be what you see on Instagram. Don't let it be these little fraud and little page where you see these Bentleys and Rolls Royces and all of this other type. Don't let that be your motivation. Let the peace be your motivation. Let, let being God driven. Let being doing what God told you to be. Let, let the safety be your motivation. And everything else will flow. You being able to take your children on those vacations will flow. You being able to decide truly what you want to do in your career path. If you need to go back, if you want to be an entrepreneur, if this job for you that you're doing, where you making this bare minimum, if this is acceptable for you, a lot of us are harboring skills that can open up a whole new world for us and our family. But the reason we're harboring them is because we are not even, we don't even think our thinking is on a wavelength of luxury. We don't, we, we, we so caught up in this box of survival. We don't even understand. Like I'm not, I can't do that. Y'all know I don't do that, baby. I just do this little one little job that they, they taught me. It's all I do. Make my little money. Come home. Barely make it. Barely do this. Barely do that. Get mad when I see other people living their life. Say something negative. Put some negativity in the atmosphere. You know I'm not into that. We don't even start and sit down and think, you know what? Maybe the skill, you know, that I thought that I had when I was, uh, when I was younger, when I was 18 and 19. Let me see what that skill is about. Let me jump outside the box and think a little bit. Let me pray on this. Let me ask God to guide me in this direction. Let me let, let me write down and tell God what I really want. You need to write down on a piece of paper tonight, tomorrow, whatever it may be when you listen to this. You need to really write down what the definition of luxury living is for you. And you really need to have a conversation with God and ask him to show you the direction that you need to go for this. Tell him that you want peace. Tell him that you want the safety. Tell him you want the ability to send your children to better schools. That you want to be able to feed them better fools. Ask Ask him and he will deliver every single time. But you first have to sit down and really realize truly that there is an issue that lies there. I don't think that's that people don't understand. It's so much luxury in being able to rebuild. Okay. It's so much luxury in being able to realize who's for you and who's not for you. It's so much more deeper than just a nice handbag. Than just a, a, a luxury vehicle. Than just nice jewelry. It's so much more bigger than that. When you decide to live this life all the way around, you have made the decision that you are no longer accepting anything but the best of the best. You are no longer accepting bare minimum. And that also means accepting it from yourself. I know there's areas that I can work in. Okay. Like we know, we talk about this all the time. My consistency is a little do. I know that, um, you know, I, I, there's some areas in my foundation that I need to fix. So, but, but what keeps me going is I know that I only want the best of the best. And in order for me to get the best and the best, I have to do better. I have to put more work in. 
You know, and that's the thing that our generation wants. We want to get to the top of the mansion and the nice cars, but we don't want to put any work in because we have seen or we think we're seeing, but it's really smoking, smoking mirrors on social sites. People that go from zero to 100 real quick. And some people do have success stories like that. God does move in some people's lives like that. But let me tell you something. When he gets to moving like that. You better have a good foundation with it because it's a lot to come with it when it comes fast like that. You need to be building yourself for the things that you expect from life as well, too. You need to be accepting of those things. You need to carry yourself like those things are going to be are they owe to you when you're here to collect. A lot of y'all now, a lot of y'all want, you know, to be living this very, you know, nice, bougie lifestyle. And you guys don't want to put any type of bougie to your, to, to nothing, you know, and bougie is one of my favorite words to use. To use. It's a good and a bad word, but you don't want to put any class, any e- elegance to anything that you do, but you want this amazing lifestyle. You know, you don't, you want to, you want to run this business. You want to have this, but you don't even have basic communication skills. You know, it's, it's so much more than just, I'm getting this money and I'm doing this and that with it. And now I'm living this life and I'm doing this and that. It's so much more. It it, it all comes down to your thinking, how you carry yourself. I've went so many places, so many very, very nice places. And I've seen women there and I, and I can automatically tell, um, that they felt out of place. And, um, the reason that I can tell this is because their body language speaks it. And the body language that they would get from me would be very, you know, like their confidence level would be low. Like, you know, they're really not making eye to eye contact. Let's say we're in a restaurant with the waiter. Um, You know, they they just seem out of place. And I will always be like, why? You know, why? 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 Why do you why are you over there looking like that? My baby, what's going on? But a lot of it would be because they have been. For so many years, they've been taught, you know, we don't, you can't afford these restaurants. So when you go to them, they're going to be uppity and the food going to be this and you're not going to know how to, instead of embracing it as a new experience, they're embracing it like I'm not supposed to be here. And that's what you have to embrace life as when you want better. You have to embrace everything as a new experience, not as I heard I'm not supposed to be here and what I'm doing here and they don't want me here. You have to embrace it as this is something new I'm embarking on and I'm going to do great. And if I don't do great, ask questions. Don't be afraid to ask and learn more. Learning is all you're going to learn until if you are living and growing appropriately the way you should be, you should be learning until you leave this earth. You should not be leaving this earth and not be learning every single day, even if it's just a different way to open the door. You should be learning something. And if you look at life as as you're embarking on a new journey and you're learning a new skill and you're doing something different instead of, uh oh, I'm about to be somewhere I'm going to go. I've never been to this type of restaurant. I can't even go in that dealership and talk to them. I don't even know how to talk to them or they're going to be looking at me a certain way because I'm black and this and this and that. If you look at things like that, that is the energy that you're going to bring to yourself. And let me explain something to you. Whenever I encounter any type of racist energy, it gets addressed. My baby, I don't play them games anymore. I've been... You know, I've been not playing them games. Y'all know my mouth was real guy still working on me, but I'm vip. <laughs> Baby, don't play with me. You have to demand a certain amount of, of respect. Living a, living this life, living a life of luxury, living a life of abundance takes you demanding a lot of respect. And being okay, and, and being okay with walking away when you're not getting it. When you're not getting respect, you need to know when to exit the scene. You know, when you don't feel like this is a, you know, this is going to be beneficial for me or, you know, or this person is even capable of dealing with someone with me on this level, or, you know, I'm trying to do better and they not, it's time for you to exit the sea and you got to be in, and the respect also dips into strength too. You got to be strong and you have to be strong and secure in who you are and what you deserve. This is not a game for the weak. It's not. You have to realize that this life is not going to work for me. You have to realize I've been carrying a poor and a poverty lifestyle. I, I, I love this story all the time. It's not a good one, but it's how I operate. I have I have let so many friends go because I remember years ago when I first got out of nursing school and I started making a little bit of money and got off of my parents' payroll. You know, I 
I used to, you know, I was buying myself all types of stuff and doing stuff and, you know, living life. And, you know, I would encounter these friends and they'd be like, girl, I can't afford that. I still got this debt. I still got this and I got that. And I used to be like, what? And I used to be so angry and I would, and, and, and at them because they had this mindset. And I'm like, you just worked so hard, got this degree, made it through, and you still think you don't deserve, you still don't think you enough. You still don't think that you're capable of getting more and being more. You don't think you deserve to, to live. And I had to realize that that was the way they were brought up. They were brought up in this survival lifestyle. So it's, it's, it's hard and it's hard to break. It's hard to break out of. It really is hard to break out of because there's so much fear behind it, but you have to live fearlessly. And you also have to know that sometimes you're going to, I don't, I think another thing too, is people be too like, don't, and I don't even call them mistakes, they're lessons. You have to know that there's going to be some lessons that come out of us, come out of it. Some of y'all are trying to avoid these lessons, but these lessons are going to put you in a blessing. You trying to play like lesson, um, you know, code, like, like put like, like restrictions. You trying to filter all the lessons out. You're trying to play real, like, I don't want to go through that, Lord. Like, and I used to do it too, like, Lord, I don't want to deal with nothing else crazy. Please, Father, you know, I'm just not even going to do that because I already know that can end badly and B can happen and D can happen. Some of y'all is living like that. And that's another reason why you're not living to your full, to your best, to your abundance, because you, that's what you're doing. You, you, you blocking all the lessons out and the lessons going to push you into something great. So many times I have had lessons and it may not have been materialistic things, but let me tell you something, baby, the spiritual and the mental lesson that I learned from that is worth so much more than anything I can ever buy. I can reference back to that and that can help me in situations that can put me in a better financial position. I'm capable and I'm able to learn a lesson. And to know when I'm wrong or to know when I handle something incorrectly. And that is a part of also living a life of luxury, of you growing, of you understanding that you got to do better. And that sometimes you may make poor decisions and you may have to learn a lesson or two. And it may even, you may even feel like it's setting you back, but it's really not. It's really bringing you to where you need to be. Because what I say is all about the way you think. Living a life of luxury is living a life of mental free, a mental fearless freedom. You living a life of abundance is living a life with God. You putting him first, you letting him lead and guide you. He will lead you to this life of abundance. You asking him, you communicating with him, you understanding that you have to put love and light into the universe. You turning your frequency up and no longer lowering it. You not embarking in negativity. You putting yourself in a, in a positive place. You letting those people go that are weighing you down, that may not be ready to grow and you pray for them and you keep going. A lot of times you just got to pray for people and keep going y'all are so I don't know I, I wish that y'all would let people go it sucks I know but you have to like I'm sorry like we, we keep having this discussion over and over again and it's like what is the problem you have had multiple multiple confirmations that it's time for you to let this person go sit down with God have one more talk with him talk with you again he gonna send you by eight more signs and then hopefully you'll be ready to let them go but you have to be okay with being alone sometimes to get to this luxury life that you want to live it's not gonna always be with 18 people around you to talk to you all day every day about it it's gonna be some days where the only person you're gonna have to talk to the only the only person that's gonna be there that's that's better and that's better than any person that's gonna be God you know, and that's why it's, it's important you build that relationship now. And even if it's not built on a 10.9, you know, wavelength, you need to be building it on at least a one. You need to be able to even pray. You need to be able to even be God fearing. You know, you need to be able to be, to be, you know, critical of yourself. Accept criticism. It's godly to accept criticism. I used to wasn't able to, I'm still working on that. I don't, I still am working on that. I'm not even going like toot my horn and be like, I used to be able to, I'm still working on that. But that is a part of my spiritual growth. But being able to accept criticism, being able to know like when I was wrong and you know, if I could have handled something right, because in my mind, I'm a genius. So I am. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I didn't really need nobody <laughs> coming to me with no tea because I am the tea, you know? But it's, it's, it's imperative that you know when you're wrong and you accept criticism, you know, and you take that criticism and make adjustments where need be. And sometimes the criticism is you need to change who you're around and the environment you are around is poor and the frequency of it is poor. And it just takes small steps. 
You make the small step, God will make the big step. But you got to be able to make the small step first for you to get to this life. You have to understand from the beginning and built the foundation that I was promised this abundance. This is how God wants me to live. But there are so many things that come along with it as well. You have to live and carry yourself a certain way. You have to be a giver. I ha- I don't, I, God doesn't give you, God is not going to give you all of this great, wonderful, this, all this money, this, all this time to do whatever, uh, this and that for you not to, to give back to the community, for you to not give back to your neighbor, for you to not pour into somebody else. That's, that's one of the main reasons why I want more so I can give more because I feel like more people need to be, need to see people give to understand it's okay to give. And not be given because you feel like a person is needy, but be given just because you want a person to just have a little bit of what you got. You see what I'm saying? You want them to leave, you want them to feel a little bit like I need for all y'all to go with me to Hawaii because I want y'all to feel this vacation like y'all deserve it. Not because you can't afford it, but just come on. I want everybody to go. Like small things like that. Those are things that I'm looking forward to being able to do for my family and my friends and for people who, who I may encounter along the journey. For whoever God may tell me that I need to share with. But that's what it's all about. You want to be able to serve others. You want to be able to pour into everybody else. Living a life of luxury is not for you to hoard all the blessings and the things to yourself. He gives you so much so you can give so much to others. And you're never going to run out. When you live a mentality like that, when you live like that, you don't run out. There's It's limitless, baby. It comes from everywhere. It's growing on trees. It finally grows on trees. Yeah, your mama said don't grow. It do. It do. Yep, yep, it do. And that's when it does. That's when you're going to be like, okay, it's it's growing on trees. It is. Because you're putting out so much great. It's, it's, it's God has to, he got to send it. It's no, it's no other way but for him to send it back to you. That It's no other way. So, woo, that was a great word. I was, it's like I'm kind of out of breath, but it was a great word. So, just a couple of things Um, before we exit the scene, you know, I love you guys. I love you so much. And, um, I have been, you know, going into this season has been a season of growing for me and I'm just really excited, um, of where I'm going and where God's taking me and where my brand is going. So I just, I just want to thank you again for just being a part and listening. And if you are not a part of, um, you know, my Instagram family, I want you to be a part of it. I want you to be parts, have parts. You can follow me at nurse underscore Monroe. And also we can comment and we can like um, here on Apple Podcasts and let them know. Leave some great comments on how, how you feel about this episode or any other episodes you listen to. And please share, 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 share. Sharing is what? Caring. So you have to share and, you know, let everyone know and let your girlfriend know and listen to it in the car when you're in the car with some people carpooling. However you want to do it, baby. But the objective is to get the word out and not to hoard the word. We are serving while being what serving I am um you know I just I'm just grateful I'm just in a place of gratitude I don't know you know what life is gonna hit me with um in this next six months to a year but I know what's I'm excited you know and I know it's gonna get better and I know God has great and, and you know what it is 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 I get to watch God do what he has promised me to do when I'm looking forward to that so before I go I'm going to share with you a scripture that I want you to always remember because you are the light of God's life and the light of my life and you are just great and wonderful. And in order for you to live this life of luxury, you must carry yourself as a king or a queen. So I am reading from Matthews 4, um, verse 14. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. Okay. Remember, baby, you are the light of the world and you deserve everything that is owed and is going to be given to you. I love you so very much and have an awesome day, month, time, year and all that good stuff. And thank you so, 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 so very much for listening. And I will see you next time. Bye.